Welcome everyone. My name is Antje Krema and I'm working as Global Product Manager at Wildney Biotech. Today I'm very happy to present you our tool to manufacture gene engineered hematopoietic stem cells, namely the Clinimax Prodigy Hematopoietic Stem Cell Engineering System or short HSCE. This HSC engineering process enables the manufacturing of gene engineered HSCs by viral transduction. So this is the disclaimer of my presentation. Let's have a look at today's agenda. So we will start with the topic cell manufacturing with the Clinimax Prodigy platform, which will lead us to the manufacturing of gene engineered agencies. Next, I will present you the Clinimax Prodigy HSC engineering system, which enables the automated viral transduction of human CD34 plus cells in the closed system of the Clinimax Prodigy. Here, I'm going to provide you information about the workflow, technical detail, process specifications, and some performance data. Finally, we will conclude with some closing remarks. So let's start with the first topic, cell manufacturing with the Clinimax Prodigy. So in general, cell manufacturing is highly complex. Human error is frequently identified as one of the highest risk elements of a manufacturing process, leading to protocol deviations and batch failures. Automation mitigates these risks by providing repeatable and reliable cell processing. Moreover, automating and closing of manual steps makes manufacturing more scalable, robust, reliable and consistent to enhance product quality. And exactly this is provided by the Clinimax Prodigy instrument, which is an all-in-one type automated platform for cell manufacturing. This platform provides sterility from the setup to the product removal. For that, all manufacturing is performed within the single use and closed tubing set. As a benchtop device, the Clinimax Prodigy is portable. The Prodigy platform is already used clinically to prepare stem cells for craft engineering, dendritic cells for therapeutic vaccines, pathogen reactive T cells for infectious diseases, and CAR T cells, which is a testament how flexible our Prodigy can be. Further point to mention is reproducibility which is ensured by the programmable procedure. Traceability and safety by the data collection and retention are two further important points for the Prodigy platform. By having with the Clinimax Prodigy instrument one system instead of modular processes, the transfer of process from development to manufacturing will be easier as well. So let's talk about the hardware of the Clinimax Prodigy. The Clinimax Prodigy is a functionally integrated and closed system. Together with the disposables, the tubing set, short TS, and other accessories, the Clinimax Prodigy allows automated cell processing from the starting material to the final product. The tubing sets are for single use only and completely closed. By sterile welding, the users can apply media, buffers, and reagents as they need during the manufacturing process. Furthermore, sampling pouches are integrated in the tubing set so that the user can do in-process controls. The final cell product is harvested in the integrated target cell bags. During the process, cell cultivation is performed in the centricult unit, the heart for cell manufacturing. It supports automated adherent and non-adherent cell culture. In this chamber, the temperature and the level of carbon dioxide and nitrogen is controlled. Furthermore, visual cell examination by the integrated microscope is possible. The Clinimax Prodigy platform is very flexible as it contains a broad range of processes, which you see here on the right side. It contains CE processes, such as the LP34 enrichment, to perform CD34 enrichment, or also, for example, GMP processes, 
such as the CAR T cell process, also known as TCT, the T cell transduction process. Furthermore, important to mention, customized application shortcuts are offered. Today, I will introduce you the Clinimax Prodigy Agency Engineering Process, short HSCE, which is a GMP process to manufacture gene engineered HSCs by viral transduction of human CD34 plus cells. But before, we are coming to the general topic of manufacturing gene engineered HSCs. So as you might know, HSC gene therapy is a promising option to treat inherited diseases such as sickle cell disease, beta thalassemia, or inherited immunodeficiencies, for example, SCID, standing for severe combined immunodeficiency. The HSC gene therapy is based on an ex vivo approach. Here, I show you the ex vivo approach based on lentiviral transduction. At first, CD34 plus cells are isolated from the patient, for example, a thalassemic patient. Then, the isolated CD34 plus cells are transduced in vitro with a lentiviral vector. Afterwards, these gene engineered cells are re infused back to the patient. The manual procedure to manufacture these gene engineered agencies consists of many steps. Everything is starting with the incoming documentation, then going over sample processing, HSC enrichment, and all further cell culture steps, including the transduction. Finally, the gene engineered HSCs are harvested, followed by release testing, final formulation, and further documentation. As you can see, this manual procedure consists of many separate steps and is very complex. So what if we can help to simplify this procedure? And exactly here comes our Clinimax Prodigy HSC engineering system in, which enables the manufacturing of gene engineered HSCs, fully automated, sterile, and standardized. I will present you now information on the workflow, technical detail, process specifications, and performance data of this process. First, I want to give you some key points about this process. The HSC engineering process enables the automated HSC transduction in the closed system of the Clinimax Prodigy. It is a highly flexible software, which enables you to easily automate manual transduction processes. Furthermore, it is a highly efficient process at low volume, showing robust performance independent of the donor. The cellular starting material of the HSC engineering process are CD34 plus cells, which have to be enriched beforehand, for example, from mobilized leukophoresis. That means that the CD34 enrichment is a separate step, which has to be done before starting the HSC engineering process. The CD34 enrichment can be either done with the Clinimax Plus or the Clinimax Prodigy. The enriched CD34 plus cells are prepared in a bag, and the first step in the HSC engineering process is then the connection of the cell bag to the tubing set on day zero. After transfer into the chamber, the CD34 plus cells are pre cultured in HSC brewed GMP medium supplemented with max GMP cytokines. In the next step, the CD34 plus cells are genetically modified by viral transduction. Several transduction rounds are possible if required. After transduction, the final product of gene engineered CD34 plus cells is harvested. The total process time depends on the number of transduction rounds. So for our predefined protocol of one transduction round, the process time takes two days, whereas for our predefined protocol of two transduction rounds, the process time takes three days. Here, I show you the required material of the HSC engineering workflow, divided into connect cell bag, pre-cultivation, viral transduction, and harvested final product. Below this workflow, the required material is listed. In the purple frames, you see the Miltony backbone part, whereas the orange frames depict the flexible part of the system. 
The middle knee backbone part includes the Clinamax Prodigy instrument and the Clinamax Prodigy tubing set 520. Furthermore, the culture reagents of the CD34 plus cells, this includes the AGC Brood GMP medium and the Max GMP cytokines, SCF, TPO, FLT3 ligand, and interleukin-3. The flexible part includes the CD34 plus cells, which has to be enriched beforehand. This can be either done by using the Clinimax Plus or the Clinimax Prodigy. Furthermore, the lentiviral vector belongs to the flexible part. The lentiviral vector can be, for example, purchased from Lentigen. In the Clinimax Prodigy HFC engineering process, the closed tubing set TS520 is used. So for the first step is the installation of this tubing set on the Clinimax Prodigy instrument. Afterwards, all manufacturing steps are performed within the closed tubing set. On the right side, you can see the setup of the Clinimax Prodigy tubing set 520 for the HSC engineering process. The cellular starting material is prepared in the cell bag and is connected to port 8. The HSC Blue GMP medium is added into the chamber from port 3. Very important for the HSC engineering process is its separate cytokine feeding step, as this significantly reduces the cost for the expensive cytokines required for HSCs. For that, we have a cytokine bag which is connected to port 4 to transfer the max GMP cytokines from the bag into the chamber. Furthermore, important to mention, we have the viral vector bag, which is connected to port 5. And for the final formulation, we have here the formulation solution bag, which is connected to port 6, and in the end, to harvest our final product. In the next slides, I will provide you now with some technical details. For that, we will go through the full process in detail. So the first step is the connection of the cell bag on day zero, and the cell bag contains the cellular starting material of CD34 plus cells and is connected to port eight. In the next step, the cells are transferred into the chamber and resuspended in HSC brood GMP medium, supplemented with max GMP cytokines. This is termed culture setup. There are two options of culture setups. The predefined culture setup contains a washing step with medium. The final cell concentration is 1 million cells per milliliter, and due to this, the culture volume in the chamber is automatically calculated. In the flexible culture setup, the second option, you can choose between with or without wash. If you have the CD34 cells, for example, already in medium, then you may save time by choosing without wash. Furthermore, you can decide in the flexible culture setup about the culture volume in the chamber. And accordingly, the cell concentration will differ. The selected culture setup is performed automatically, including a medium and a cytokine feed. After the culture setup is performed, your output in the chamber are the CD34 plus cells in HSC brood GMP medium supplemented with max GMP cytokines. So the next step after the pre-cultivation is the viral transduction. So the procedure of the viral transduction is defined in the activity matrix. This activity matrix is a protocol composed of different activities. So how do we build such an activity matrix? There are different activities available which can be selected by the operator. Some exemplary activities are shown here on the right side. So how do we build now the activity matrix? And as said, we are select activities. So let's imagine we're starting with the activity activate shaker. Then we want to add medium into the chamber. And as we've just learned, when we are adding medium, we also need cytokines. So we should select the activity cytokine feed. Then, as it's a transduction procedure, we might be going for the activity transduction. And afterwards, maybe we are considering to do a wash to remove left viral vector. So we would select culture wash. In the end, to harvest our final product, we should select the activity end of culture. 
The selected activities are then programmed to be performed at a specific day and time. And taken together, this defined activity matrix is the procedure of the viral transduction in the HSC engineering process. In general, there are three options of activity matrices for the HSC engineering process. The protocol for one hit is the predefined activity matrix to do one transduction round with a process time of two days. So if you have a stable and effective viral vector, this might be a good starting point. The protocol for two hits is the predefined activity matrix to perform true transduction rounds with a process time of three days. The second transduction round might increase the transduction efficiency. These two predefined activity matrices are standardized protocols that can be modified by adding or deleting activities according to the needs of the operator. The third option is a customized setup, and this is an empty activity matrix to prepare the individual procedure of viral transduction from the start, so by combining different activities such as transduction, culture wash, feed, and so on. According to the needs, one of the options should be chosen. Here, all available activities of the HSC engineering process are listed, which can be used to prepare the activity matrix. So let's have a look. The shaking in the chamber can be activated by the activity activate shaker and deactivated by the activity deactivate shaker. By the activity feed, fresh medium is added into the chamber, whereas the activity media exchange will remove all media and add fresh media in the chamber. The volume in the chamber is reduced by the activity volume transduction. The activity transduction transfers the viral vector into the chamber. For the separate cytokine feeding step, you need the activities connect cytokine back and cytokine feed. Furthermore, spinning is possible by the activity spin. The activity culture wash can be used for separate washing steps, for example, to remove left transduction reagent. Then next we have two activities, the medium back exchange and the waste back exchange to exchange on the one hand the medium back and also to exchange the waste back. And finally, the harvest of the final product is performed by the activity end of culture. There are only less activities which require user interaction. For example, the activities transduction, connect cytokine back, medium back exchange, waste back exchange, and the harvest by the activity end of culture. All other listed activities do not require user interaction. And as mentioned, by combining different activities, you are generating an individual activity matrix, which is the procedure of viral transduction. So, as we have just learned, after viral transduction, the final product of genetically modified CD34 plus cells is harvested in the target cell bag. The harvest is performed automatically by the activity end of culture. This activity consists of two washing steps followed by the harvest in 100 milliliter physiologic sodium chloride supplemented with 0.5% HSA. So after going through the process in detail, I will sum up the provided information by going through the process specifications. The cellular starting material of the HSC engineering process are CD34 plus cells, for example, enriched from mobilized leukophoresis. The minimum cell number are 20 million CD34 plus cells. According to our R&D technical experts, the HSC engineering process is scalable up to 800 million CD34 plus cells. In this context, it is important to mention, we have not tested the cell number of 800 million cells in the HSC engineering process due to limited cell sources. Our R&D at Milton Biotech has tested up to 200 million cells in a culture volume of 200 milliliter. According to publications, the cell number should be scalable up to 800 million cells in 200 milliliter, 
which would result in a cell concentration of 4 million cells per milliliter. The recommended culture volume for the HNC engineering process is between 40 to 200 milliliter. Regarding the transduction conditions, the MOI of the used viral vector will always depend on the vector and the application. The transduction is performed in agency brewed GMP medium, supplemented with SCF, TPO, SLT3 ligand, and interleukin-3. The process time takes two to three days with a hands-on time of approximately two hours. Regarding the final product, the final product of the HSC engineering process are gene engineered CD34 plus cells, which are harvested in a volume of 100 milliliter physiologic sodium chloride supplemented with 0.5% HSA. And furthermore, important to mention, the HSC engineering process shows a very good cell recovery. Finally, I would like to show you some performance data for the HSC engineering process compared to the manual transduction in small-scale controls. For that, CD34 plus cells were enriched from mobilized leukophoresis and then transduced once with lenti viral vector encoding GFP. The transduction was performed according to the predefined activity matrix of one transduction round, the protocol for one hit. The harvest of the final product was performed on day two. For the experiments, two different MOIs, MOI30 and MOI100, were compared. The harvested gene-engineered agencies were then analyzed in the recovery of viable cells on day two, the transduction efficiency by flow cytometry on day five, the total number of CFUs on day 16, and the vector copy number on day 16. Here, the recovery of viable cells after harvest on day two is shown for MOI30 and for MOI100. In total, CD34 plus cells from 16 different mobilized leukophoresis were processed. In the graphs, one donor is displayed in one color. And as mentioned, the Clinimax Prodigy HSC engineering process was compared to the manual controlled. The results show that the recovery of viable cells is comparable for the manual control and the Clinimax Prodigy. You can see that for MOI30 and for MOI100. Interestingly, the Clinimax Prodigy generates a lower variability in the recovery of viable cells, as you can see here if you compare that. And this indicates a robust performance independent of the donor. Here, the results for the transduction efficiency by flow cytometry on day five are shown. After harvest on day two, the harvested cells were further cultured in small scale until day five to enable GFP expression. On day five, the transduction efficiency was measured by flow cytometry. For MOI100, the transduction efficiency is comparable for the Clinimax Prodigy and the manual control. However, for MOI30, the transduction efficiency is significantly increased for the Clinimax Prodigy compared with the manual control. Furthermore, we also did colony forming unit assays, short CFU assays. The analysis of the CFU assays confirmed the higher transduction efficiency of the Clinimax Prodigy for MOI30. This states the Clinimax Prodigy HSC engineering system as highly efficient. As we were just talking about CFU assays, I also want to show you the total number of CFUs built per 250 cells seeded. This is shown here for untransfused CD34 plus cells compared to transfused CD34 plus cells either by manual transduction or the Clinimax Prodigy HSC engineering process. The total number of generated colonies is comparable between untransfused and transfused CD34 plus cells either by manual transduction or the Clinimax Prodigy HSC engineering process. And this is again shown for MOI30 and for MOI100. With that, we can say that the transduction 
either manually performed or with the Clinimax Prodigy HSC engineering process, has no influence on the colony formation ability and thus the proliferation and differentiation potential of the CD34 plus cells remains the same. Finally, we analyze the vector copy number on day 16. The vector copy number is comparable for the manual transduction and the Clinimax Prodigy HSC engineering process. This was shown for MOI 30 and for MOI 100. For MOI 30, we observed a vector copy number of approximately 2, and for MOI 100 of approximately 3. After presenting you the HSC engineering process in detail, we are coming to the end of my presentation and I want to give you some closing remarks. The Clinimax Prodigy HSC engineering process was launched in the beginning of this year and we are now highly excited to support the cell processing field with our tool to manufacture gene-engineered agencies. Here I'm showing you the press release we had in the beginning of this year to launch our HSC engineering process. So where can you find more information? Please visit our clinical application page, which provides a good overview about this process. In this scientific poster, we compared the Clinimax Prodigy HSC engineering process with the classical manual transduction and had a close look at efficiency and viability of the transduced HSCs. The application sheet will give you more details about the process specifications. Furthermore, if you need a practical training, our technical support is providing a comprehensive HSCE customer training, which is lasting two days. The next training is planned to take place in autumn. So if you are interested, please contact your local representative. At the time point of starting to use the Clinimax Prodigy HSC engineering process, the available HSCE cytokine calculation Excel sheet might be of interest for you. This is available on request. And finally, if you need personalized support for your HSC engineering process, please get in touch with us via this link or contact your local representative. After the webinar, you will also get directly forwarded to this website. There, you can fill in the contact form to request personalized support. Last but not least, I want to emphasize a very important point by showing our translational HSC workflow, namely clinical translation, or you can also call it from bench to bedside. Here, you can see an overview about the research and the clinical workflow we are providing for the manufacturing of gene-engineered agencies. I will not go into detail, but the listed information should support you in the future for making your cell manufacturing process successful. And with that, I am coming to the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed this webinar and that you're also now very excited as well about the Clinimax Prodigy HSC engineering process as tool for manufacturing gene engineered agencies. Thank you very much for your attention and now I'm looking forward to your questions.